On the 29th of July, 1981, in St. Paul's Cathedral, a 33-year-old Prince Charles married a 20-year-old Diana Spencer. As they stepped up to the altar, 75 million people watched what they believed to be a fairy tale wedding. And forsaking all other, keep the only unto her, so long as ye both shall live. I will. Another woman, Camilla Parker Bowles, had already stolen the Prince of Wales's heart. The love triangle that ensued resulted in bitterness, jealousy, and ultimately, death. November 1980, eight months before their wedding, Prince Charles, England's most eligible bachelor, and Lady Diana Spencer, daughter of one of Britain's most aristocratic families, dined and danced the night away in the Ritz in London. Years later, Diana described it as one of the most romantic nights of her life. But the following evening, the Prince of Wales's train carriage parked up in a dimly lit siding near Holt in Wiltshire. That night, a blonde-haired woman was seen slinking out of the shadows and onto the train. Ten days later, the Sunday Mirror splashed the headline, Royal Love Train, convinced that the blonde woman was Lady Diana Spencer. But unknown to the press, there was another blonde in Charles's life, Camilla Parker Bowles. It's widely accepted that she was in fact the woman who visited Charles on the Royal Train that night, not Diana. She protested her innocence. At that stage, she wasn't even engaged to Prince Charles, and she was frightened silly that uh, if it was discovered that she'd slept with the Prince of Wales before she was engaged to him, then the marriage would be off. The way that uh, it was played out, the way that Buckingham Palace reacted, the way that Prince Charles reacted, I think all points absolutely conclusively to the fact that it was Camilla. Charles first met Camilla in June 1971 in the shadow of Windsor Castle. At that time, she was dating Andrew Parker Bowles, a cavalry officer whose family had close connections to the Queen Mother. A witness at the polo match noticed the rapport between Charles and Camilla. Their mutual love of horses marked Camilla out, and her passion and skill at horse riding made her particularly attractive to the prince. Camilla Parker Bowles rides very well. Camilla Parker Bowles rides extremely well. She's very, very well mounted, but you know she's a she's a natural horsewoman, and uh, um, you know she's excellent rider across country. From then on, Camilla and Charles were often in each other's company. One evening in the autumn of '72, they were spotted dancing the night away at Annabelle's, a fashionable London nightclub. It seemed inevitable to many that Charles and Camilla would eventually become lovers, since her great grandmother Alice Keppel had been the mistress of Charles's great-great-grandfather, King Edward VII. I suspect for Camilla, because her great-grandmother had had an affair with his great-grandfather um, when he was Prince of Wales, I think she thought that it would might be quite fun to do the same. A friend of Camilla's has since told how the couple left Annabelle's and went to Camilla's flat in Victoria, where they spent the night. But despite the mutual attraction, Camilla knew that she could never be his wife. Camilla was neither an aristocrat nor a virgin. Society was not yet ready for, for the Prince of Wales to marry someone who'd had a previous boyfriend, and Camilla certainly had. He had to marry someone who was absolutely virginally pure. The Prince of Wales clearly couldn't be seen to be marrying a girl who had a past or had, uh, or had any real, what I call, serious history to her. So when Andrew Parker Bowles proposed marriage in March 1973, Camilla accepted his offer. I think there would be very, very few girls who would have turned down Andrew Parker Bowles. Very nice chap, very good looking, um, full, of bun, full of fun, you know. Dashing cavalry officer of his day. 
But Camilla's new husband also seemed to accept that she would continue her relationship with the prince. This was no more apparent than at the Sirencester Polo Club Ball in 1980. Unsurprisingly, the story leaked out. They were kissing on the dance floor, and Andrew Parker Bowles was sitting in the front row watching uh, this couple continuing to dance, continuing to hug each other, continuing to kiss on the dance floor. And at one stage he turned and Riley said to somebody who was sitting next to him, uh, HRH uh, seems to like my wife. And she seems to like him very much indeed. And then he laughed because there was nothing else he could do. But despite his obvious attraction to Camilla, Charles needed a suitable wife. According to his household staff, he turned to Camilla for advice. She would, of course, have been vetting, if you like, Prince Charles' girlfriends and looking for people that were suitable to be his bride and therefore produce the air and the spare that the royal family were desperate for because Prince Charles was in his early 30s and there was a bit of worry about whether he's ever going to get married and have children. But it wasn't easy. Many of Charles's girlfriends during the 70s were warned by their friends that he had a long-standing relationship with Camilla. Anna Wallace was no exception. There was one night at uh, Stowell Park where uh, they went to a party. Anna was Charles's date, but he spent the whole night with Camilla. And Anna Wallace, to give her credit, uh, just said, up with this I will not put, and walked out. Finally, in July 1980, the efforts to find a suitable girl paid off when on a weekend break to a friend's house in Sussex, Charles met a young woman sitting on a hay bale. Her name was Diana. Diana was very malleable, very innocent, naive, gauche, uh, hadn't been around, and Camilla felt that she could fit Diana into the whole plan, into the whole scheme of things, i.e. to see Charles, to make sure that publicly he had a wife who was dutiful and happy. But what neither Charles nor Camilla foresaw was that the moment Diana entered Charles' life, the media would become entranced. Who was this mystery girl? Those were the headlines. You know, who is this mystery blonde with the Prince of Wales who's so shy? Is, is there any possibility of any announcement of your marriage in the near future? Can you tell me? Can you tell me if there's any possibility? I'm not going to say anything. Okay. Oh, but Prince Charles did give us a hint himself. He said we wouldn't have to wait too long. But Prince Charles's courtship of Diana seemed always to be under the watchful eye of Camilla. At the Ludlow races, it was Camilla who held the reins as she chaperoned a media-shy Diana. There was the prince unsaddling his horse. Diana and Camilla were watching from above, yeah. She very much guided Diana through that day. I remember it very clearly. She was, she was warning Diana, she was telling her what to do, where to go, where to stand, and very much in complete control. Camilla Parker Bowles knew that she couldn't marry the Prince of Wales, but if she persuaded uh, or, or assisted Diana Spencer to marry the Prince of Wales, she would always be in, in pole position. Unaware that she had a rival for Charles's heart, Diana had fallen in love. But Charles was less than sure. On a tour to India, Charles even told the journalists about his reservations. He once um, said to me uh, in New Delhi during his trip to India just before the engagement, um, why do you think she's the one? Because he went on to say, you mustn't rush me. You'll be the first to criticise me if I get it wrong. <laughs> but he was terribly unsure. He was actually saying to me, do you think I should marry her? It's extraordinary. On the 6th of February 1981, Charles proposed to Diana at Windsor Castle. She immediately said yes. Three weeks later, she was examined by the Queen's gynaecologist and pronounced fit and a virgin. Lady Diana Spencer may very well have been the only aristocratic virgin uh, left in the country. I mean, uh, um, that could easily be true. That could easily be, be true. She's uh, been brave enough to take me on. <laughs> and I suppose in love. Of course. <laughs> Whatever in love means. Yes. When Diana moved into Clarence House in London, she was greeted by a note from Camilla inviting her to lunch. Restaurant staff later relayed the conversation to the owner. It was a warning of what lay ahead. 
The co-owner, Anthony Warren Thompson, has certainly spoken to me and others about what was overheard at that lunch, which was Camilla gently asking what Diana's plans would be after she got married, whether she was going to go hunting, whether she was interested in fishing, um, or indeed going on shoots, all of which Camilla was a very keen enthusiast and used to follow the Prince of Wales on. And when Diana replied no, I think it was an almost audible sigh of relief from Camilla because she knew that there were areas that Diana was not going to tread on. I think Diana, at the initial stages of the courtship to Prince Charles, thought that uh, Camilla was simply a friend, uh, maybe an ex-girlfriend, but not that important. I think as the courtship developed towards engagement, uh, Diana suddenly realised that this woman had a complete hold over Prince Charles. She actually said to one of her sisters that she was thinking about calling it off. And her sister, Lady Sarah of Corkadale, famously replied, well, you can't do that, darling, because they've painted the tea towels now. <laughs>